Hello folks, welcome to the channel. This is DoorDash Sucks here on YouTube and it was a recent video that Pedro did for the rideshare guy and today is June 5th and I'm glad I caught this because I've been meaning to talk about this subject uh, and I've mentioned some things in other videos if you've watched any of my other videos. Now, again, uh, some of you don't like when I when I critique Pedro or you think I'm kissing his ass and all this stuff. No, it's just that he, he does come up with some good subjects, folks. And when I see a good subject to talk about, I'm going to jump on it because I know of what I speak in this, uh, in this video when I'm going to add and expound on what he said. And it's important because I care about each and every one of you who drive for delivery apps and do ride share and stuff because I and I drove taxis and everything so I've done a lot of things in my life and I know where I was 20 years ago and where I am now and how I see the market and what's going on you know and why it's going on see no one ever gets at the root cause of things on a lot of these channels and again I'm not attacking Pedro he did a good job in this However, he may not know certain things about certain other subjects or may not want to talk about them because it's taboo, especially here on YouTube, because YouTube is one big censorship uh, channel. And that's why I'm mentioning my other channel, which is called Waking Up the Sheep over on uh, BitChute. And by the way, I am a Christian channel over there, folks. I don't really talk about God on here, but I probably should a lot more. Um, if you're a Christian, you love God, you should come over to that channel because there's a lot of biblical prophecy stuff that's really tied into everything. See, everyone tries to make, um, sense of the world in which we live with their own senses, their own eyes, their own interpretations and stuff. And they don't give quite enough, um, credence and, um, uh, credit to God because God <laughs> really, is uh, without him, we can't do anything. We can't work. We can't be alive. We can't breathe. We can't do nothing. So big shout out to Jesus Christ. So there you go. I said it right now. <clears throat> here's the thing, folks. The video that he did is about the employee, uh, these companies that are trying to, it's not that the companies are trying to make people employees. It's that they're being forced through the court systems. Okay by groups of people <coughs> who sue these companies. And by the way, the <coughs> the pollen is terrible in the area that I live. Is it affecting your lungs? You may have asthma like I do. It's terrible. Anyways, the uh, these companies get forced to show transparency, to be forced to do certain things, which is a good thing to a point, but I'm going to tell you why it isn't a good thing for other reasons that are not mentioned in this video. So let me roll, let me roll his video and we're going to, I'm going to pause it and I'm going to critique it because you, you guys need to know some things that you may not know. So here we go. Seattle, one of the more expensive places to live in America, was passing some legislation so the gig apps are required to pay DoorDash, Uber Eats, and other drivers minimum wage. My name is Pedro Dora Santiago back at you with the rideshare guy. And in today's video, we're going to talk about that, my opinion, why I think it's happening, why there are other cities that are doing this. And local lawmakers decide to put the squeeze on the gig companies so that they are held accountable to make sure tens of thousands of or more than that, people are being paid fairly. See, what what's happening in different cities, folks, <clears throat> is the people are fighting back. They are organizing. They're trying to form unions and things like that or whatever, a driver's union, which is a, is a good thing, but it's not a good thing either because with unions, when there's people at the head of those unions and people that you know, you try to put in power, the power corrupts them and they end up stealing money from the union fees. And that's why unions are not really good. We have a corrupt government right now, folks. Corruption is rampant. Okay. In Washington. Okay. And, um, you need to know that the politicians could care less, uh, about you, about anyone. Uh, they want to control your life, your they want to control every facet about you, including what you make, 
what you earn, you know, where you live, everything. Okay. Now, <clears throat> this comes down to a program I'm going to mention, and I'm going to mention it probably several times in this thing. But if you want to really learn some things, folks, right, you need to look up a term called Agenda 21, Agenda 21, A-G-E-N-D-A, -E right, Agenda A-G-E-N-D-A, -E Agenda 21 and Agenda 2030. And you also should be looking up the World Economic Forum, okay, uh, all over the place. Not, not here really much on YouTube because you're going to get people who will spin the truth and you won't really find the truth. So you need to come over to BitChute. <clears throat> I'm going to leave the links in the description to go to my channel. Now, there's a lot of videos over there, folks. There's over five, 600 videos now that cover an array of subjects, okay? And there's pastors from, you know, different uh, organizations that are credible and good and uh, there's prophets that are in these videos, which is tied into what's going on because, you see, it's I can't mention certain things here, so it's just hard to say it, but... The Agenda 2030 system that they want to bring everyone under, they want to keep everyone at low wages. You see, it's this whole thing, this whole economy, the economy was planned long ago, folks. And it goes back to the Federal Reserve System from 1913 and then all the way up to now and what the money system is, okay? And then you have all of these giant corporations that are in control of certain sectors and regions of the world, okay? So what you need to know is <clears throat> these company companies came in sort of innocently, right? But then they were taken over or bought out or forced to buy, to, to sell to people who came to them and said, hey, we want to take, we want to buy you for, you know, a billion dollars or whatever it was at the time. Okay. Because if you go back at the beginning of Uber and Lyft and all of these companies, they, they had, they changed hands with CEOs and everything. So <clears throat> these people are put in place in, in these positions of power to set through the things that, that are going on uh, right now in the, in the economy. That's why it's hard for most of you to make less than, I mean, more than, you know, a hundred to 200 bucks a day. If you're making $200 a day, you're blessed. But here's the thing. Look at the inflation, folks. The inflation is just out of control. So if your pay doesn't go up <clears throat> and you're having to pay more for gas, food, you know, <clears throat> whatever you buy to survive and live and pay your rent, if your money situation doesn't change, then you are living in poverty. We're, we're basically all living in poverty, right? And the only ones lining their pockets are the CEOs of these companies. But it's on purpose, folks, okay? Now, let's continue with Pedro's video. Uh, but I needed to set that out for you, like, right from the start so you know what to expect and what really is going on behind the scenes. And it's hard to just tell you in this one video... You will have had to have known what's been going on for a long time. Some of you are veterans. You've been around for a long time. You know what I'm talking about. Others, you're probably new to this subject of this channel, and you're listening to this going, what the hell is this guy talking about? But in order to make sense of it, we need to break it down. All right, so let's keep rolling. Pages. At the end of the day, I do think this will be a positive for many people. But what's the long-term effects? And are we getting closer and closer, inch by inch, day by day, to becoming W-2 employees? And how might that affect us? I'm of the mindset that, yes, I want transparency from these companies. I do think they could pay better. But at the end of the day, all these costs are going to trickle down to the consumer. That's where it's going to go. So if DoorDash and Uber Eats have to pay us more and have to up it, just like Prop 22 in California, right? things in Massachusetts, other states have had similar things. They're going to pass that along to the consumer. What happens is the consumer then has to pay more. And in return, either they decide not to fulfill that order because the delivery fees are too much and they're already high, or yep. they less the tip because he's, they feel and they don't understand that we're actually making. He's, he's right what he's saying there because that's probably how it's going to go. But what the problem is, the core to the problem is, 
is that when these companies are taken to court, the judges that these people face are corrupt. They're bought and paid for by these corporations. So before the person gets into or the group that's suing the company gets into court, right, before they get in there, this has already been settled with the judge and the corporation because the, the corporation privately has come to the judge and said, hey, Your Honor, listen, we'll give you a billion dollars or we'll give you 500 million, whatever, whatever they they get to buy them off, right? <clears throat> Just make it look as if that <coughs> you're going to side. <coughs> Pardon me, folks. Make it look like you're going to side with the um, the workers, the drivers, but then make it so we have to pay just a very small fine to get away what, what we need to do for our agenda. And there's certain agendas these companies do. Now, as you notice, all of these companies over time have reduced their their, their base pay. That was the model, folks, because they, they can't just like pull it right from under you, go from seven down to a dollar or 50 cents. They do it gradually. That's called incrementalism, okay? And you also need to look up a term called Hegelian dialectic. Hegelian dialectic. That means problem, reaction, solution. You create a problem, which the company creates a problem, right? <clears throat> people react to that problem. And then the, pe the people who created the problem become the solution to the problem they created. In other words... If it goes to the point where all of these companies and all of these states are federally, all these companies that now are going to be controlled, right? <laughs> oh, this, um, <laughs> this pollen in the air, folks, is terrible. It's just terrible. It's like I need, we need a rainstorm to get rid of all this stuff. Forgive me about that. Anyways, so what happens is the, uh, the minimum wage thing is all where they wanted to go with it in the first place. That's where they were going to take it anyways. <laughs> they just didn't come out and say that. <laughs> they don't, these companies don't mind if they, they, matter of fact, it's in their best interest, interest if they get sued and then they force them to give us minimum wage. They love that <laughs> because they're going to end up stealing way more money from the consumer and the drivers because we're, we're, we're now classified as slaves because minimum wage, folks, is not keeping up with inflation, okay? And eventually what happens is you, you think that these companies are going to go bankrupt on their own like and say, oh, yeah, let's just take one for the team. If before that even happens, they're already looking for an exit door to get out with golden parachutes to pay off the, like the CEOs, look at Dara Kashishawi with Uber. He got paid 20 million bucks. Tony Shu got an unbelievable 400 million. Well, the company made 400 billion. I'm sorry, not 400 billion, 4 billion, $4 billion in 2021. Folks, a billion dollars is a lot of money. <coughs> I mean, to have 4 billion worldwide or whatever you want to call it that's just absolutely insane all right let's uh let's continue money so then it could be a negative in that regard so this formula that's being formulated is based on time and mileage and how much you know the time you're spending on these particular deliveries and the up pay will get you to the at least that minimum of minimum wage so you're not making below that which i understand i think it's good <laughs> but yeah what's... but then what about all the idiots the four dollars. See, if you're making minimum wage, right, and you get a, a an offer that comes through, it says four dollars. Well, actually, I don't even know how they would do it, but if you knew that it was a two dollar order or four dollar order with some idiot customer that doesn't tip you, or that DoorDash or Uber steals the money from you, because all of these companies steal from us, folks. But the thing is, is that, um, you know, <laughs> it if. If we knew what those orders were and they were going to customers, we wouldn't want to take them. But if but if someone's is like, oh, I don't care where I go, I'm going to make fifteen dollars an hour. Well, you would care if you have to drive more than five miles to drop the food off to someone, right? Um, in other words, <clears throat> if you're going to make fifteen bucks an hour minimum wage, 
people are going to do everything they can to actually milk the system or take these these short distance i mean these long distance ones <laughs> and and just drive slowly because they're getting paid by the hour they might even pull the car over for a few minutes and just sit without delivering because they know that whether the food gets there hot or cold <clears throat> that the, they're still going to get 15 bucks an hour however i don't know how that that the company would deal with that like firing people because at that point you are an employee right so then now they have more control of you but you got to understand folks these companies all they these companies all meet in secret they meet in secret meetings behind the scenes without people knowing the heads of the CEOs of all these companies and they dictate what is going to take place in the economy for the years ahead you know whatever 2022 2023 that's why the world economic forum <clears throat> that meets in this place called davos in uh switzerland and stuff right these are world leaders <clears throat> that meet <clears throat> in uber in the transportation se sector those ceos meet in those groups too and so they know the inside you know whatever's being said secretly they know the inside take on it right and so <clears throat> they you know they're told beforehand hey this year we're going to drop the base pay down to 50 cents or a dollar it's going to go from two dollars down to that and i'm not saying it's going to i'm saying that that they can they can do that right and they talk about it beforehand this is what agenda 2021 20, agenda 2030 sustainable development goals are all about to get everyone in a mediocre job doing mediocre tasks so you can no one can ever prosper ever make enough money to prosper and get ahead in life and that's where it's basically going all right so let's continue long-term effect and here's who the long, decides these forms? here's the long-term effect pedro if you ever get to listen to this video you may agree or disagree it doesn't matter i'm telling you the facts these what i'm telling you folks is not conjecture i'm not making this stuff up I've done a lot of studying in the past, and I know what I'm talking about. A good source to look up if you want to learn is look up a woman named Rosa, R-O-S-A, Corey, K-O-R-I-E, uh, Corey. She has like white hair, long hair, right? She's like a middle-aged woman. Now, she passed away. <clears throat> I did a video on this months ago. <laughs> he might want to go back and look down at my other videos where you see the longest video. It's like an hour and 40 minutes or something like that. And it talks, you know, it's about what we're talking about here. Anyways, if you look her up at the uh, sustainable, let me see, uh, sustain, sustainability Institute, I think it is. You can look her up on Yahoo or Google. Well, she passed away, but the movement of what she created is still continuing. <laughs> okay, and <clears throat> if people knew what was really going on, they'd do everything to fight against all this. And um, and you you need to and you should because one day, folks, we're not going to be working for these gig app, gig apps at all, anyways. That <laughs> I mean, they're going to force all the people out that are smart people that know what they're doing and bring in a whole bunch of idiots to run run it and then eventually it will get switched over to robotic robotic uh, stuff and whatever if they have their way with the goals that they want to do all right let's continue with this do they even know what gig work really is and they know what it's like to be a driver let's talk about it like many of us we know where to find the money and we can do well but the majority of drivers don't do well they don't know they, that they're not employees and they take a lot of bad orders and then they complain about it hence then they get to what local legislation and say i'm not making enough money i'm not making 15 or 16 dollars an hour so then legislation right and so what they'll do instead of suing the companies and forcing these companies to pay the drivers a higher wage they come to a happy medium and they say we will, we'll, guess what, folks? We'll give you 15 bucks an hour. How's that sound? I mean, that's fair, right? Most people say, yeah, that's fair. It's not. <clears throat> Delivery drivers, especially truck drivers and stuff, are making $20, $30, $40, even $50 or, or more an hour. <clears throat> and this shop and pay stuff is terrible, folks. How the hell can Instacart 
and Walmart, Spark, and all these other companies, right, pay the same amount of money, or even less in some cases, than DoorDash and Uber Eats does when you have to go in a store and shop and spend a whole lot of time and then go deliver the order. It's it's insane. And then you're at the at the whim or the mercy of the customer to give you a good tip. Now, listen, all the pressure, you know, we all know that customers suck in, for the most part. A lot of them do, but there's a lot of good ones too, okay? But <clears throat> they they shouldn't be forced to be the ones that pay for everything. <laughs> What's happening is the companies are greedy. Uber is greedy. Lyft is greedy. Instacart, shipped. I mean, all of these companies are greedy. <clears throat> and here's another point that I have to make that makes you understand what I'm talking about, or hopefully does. This um, meeting that they meet at every year, this uh, meet the secret meetings I was talking about, right? <clears throat> they all have, all of the corporations all conform to the rules that are set at the, at the meetings so that every company is on board at, with the same thing. That's why you see all of these companies paying relatively the same amount of money. Occasionally, yes, they have to pay out more money because people don't want to accept an order and it keeps getting bumped up and bumped up. And so, yeah, they'll, they'll take a loss so they won't lose the customer. But then uh, the next couple of orders that you may, you might say, well, I just got a $25 order going two miles, right? Well, how about for the next hour or two, what do you think you're going to be getting? One, two, three dollar orders, four, you're going to have to decline a, a thousand orders before you get any really good ones again. And I also have my own opinion on thinking that these companies, and I can't prove this or not, but <laughs> I kind of know a little bit with Uber, like that they all, they have the algorithm, the computer algorithm that is set to pay out drivers when they deliver, right? Has all of these different triggers that is set. Okay. So when you like decline an order, when you take an order, it, it, it tracks what you take. If you take a $6.25 order, it's more than likely you're going to continue to get five, four, five, and six, and seven dollar orders until you start declining them and putting too small and whatever, right? Then you might get a medium good one, right? And they'll make you happy a little bit. They say, oh, let's throw them a bone or throw her a bone, and then they'll screw you even more. And <clears throat> I'm under the impression that they have us capped basically so that we can't really make two to three hundred dollars a day. Like let's say the cap is three hundred, right? But in order to make that three hundred, you would have to stay out twelve to probably sixteen hours. Now this is depending on the market you're in, right? According to like you may be in a really busy city <clears throat> where you're ping ponging every you know every order is going in a certain direction and there's another order waiting for you. If you're in that type of situation, yeah, you probably can make 200 bucks a day. But the majority of Americans, okay, who are dashing daily in, in Uber Eats and whatever they're doing for gig work, they live in rural areas, in suburban areas, and they have to drive long distances to, to bring the food to people. And what's happened is these companies... Or the, or the customers have gotten so used to get, you know, getting what they want on time when they want it, right? <coughs> uh, because before, when the companies were paying well and the economy was good, we weren't bitching, right? Now that we're bitching and we have every right to, the gas prices are out of, out of sight, right? And hence, the economy is just getting worse and worse and worse, right? So what do we do? We complain about it. And then what do they do? They tighten up the, you know, look at that bullshit they did with giving us a little bit of uh, help with DoorDash and whatever. And now, and then they took the programs away at the, at the time you most need it. Even if you were getting that 15 or 20 bucks that you were getting from DoorDash, it, it, the more that the gas prices go up, the less relative it becomes in important about that money. But to pull pull the, the money that they did 
And isn't it funny <clears throat> that they did that after the stock market crash in, on May 10th, when it crashed, when the three companies, Grubhub, Uber Eats, and uh, DoorDash, right, all lost, uh, or Uber or whatever, and no, Lyft, Uber, and Grubhub, or whatever it was, they all lost $2 billion plus dollars each. So where are they going to try to get the money from? <clears throat> they these companies are so greedy folks they're just insanely greedy and that's the problem what constitutes giving a ceo 20 million dollars what does the guy do he doesn't do anything he oh, oh okay he directs his office or whoever's in the office i mean are you kidding me 20 million dollars and he gets uh, then, then Tony Shu gets four hundred million dollars. <coughs> That's gluttony. That's <clears throat> they these these people don't care about you, folks. And if these companies do go away or they get dismantled or whatever you want to call it, they're just gonna take golden parachutes and ride off into the sunset, and you'll never see them again. And the companies will get disbanded. And or they might get merged in with some other company like Amazon will buy one of them or whatever. It's because they're all tied in to the same plan, the Agenda 2030 plan, folks. And it's to destroy the economy. That's what it's that you might say, what? Get out of here. <clears throat> I'm telling you, folks, because the CEOs and the people in those companies, they're well taken care of. They don't care about you. They don't care if the normal, regular little guy gets screwed because they're going to get a golden parachute. They'll live on an island somewhere. They don't care. <clears throat> they don't care about you. And I know I went on a rant here, but you had to know this stuff, folks. This is important stuff. This is a stuff that no other channel will talk about. Okay? So. Can Pass so that you're guaranteed that amount. <laughs> like I said, it's going to be good for a lot of people, but I Pardon, it's gonna hurt some pardon me, folks. I know I'm doing a lot of sniffling in the back, but background. But oh, it's I'm telling you, it's so bad. The pollen in the air, that powdered dust that comes off the trees. Oh, it's terrible. I can virus in the long run, and I do not want to be a W two employee. I don't want to have that for me, at least. <laughs> what about y'all? Comment down below right now. So I'll put some split screens of the article that came across my desk, and this is what I'm responding to and reacting to it. I think about things, if it happened in St. Louis, what would that mean for me, right? If it happened to you, what would, in your market, what would it mean for you? A guaranteed minimum. So basically this legislation is talking about, okay, it's going to, you know, per, basically like per minute, per this, per that, per, per active time, per, you know, they're going to pay you so that you're. Uh, you know, I, I don't want <laughs> Don't want to tell you a whole lot of bad news, but it's, I mean, obviously this channel tells you a lot of bad news, unfortunately, right? But another thing that's coming is, I mean, this fall, folks, is going to be brutal. I, I, um, I'm telling you, it's going to be bad. The, you'll be, the, the store shelves will barely have food on them. I mean, you might say, oh, what? Get out of here. <laughs> There's all sort of sorts of food shortages and all kinds of things going on. And what does that add up to, folks? You think the restaurants are going to have food too? <clears throat> what what is that? I mean, it's a domino effect, folks. Eventually, you won't be you won't be driving, <laughs> or you'll be making such little money that you'll you'll just quit because that's what they're gonna that's what they plan on doing is to trying to make us quit. <laughs> making that at least in Seattle 17 and the change. Not a bad, not bad, right? On the surface level, but like I said, there's when when we get something from these companies and it's forced upon them, they will take something away. History has shown us that. See, what what needs to happen, Pedro, is these people need to go to jail and put someone in place a credible, legitimate person that knows how to really run a company and do it and make it uh, fair and even for, for everyone, which you're not going to see in this lifetime, folks. It's just not going to happen because I just told you <coughs> all of the courts, all of the judges are all bought and paid for, and they'll never side with the drivers or customers or whatever, they'll only do the minimal amount of um, 
you know, fees or you know, slap on the wrist type things where they have they only pay out, you know, you might you might hear of a class action suit that paid, you know, five million dollars, right? But trust me, folks, when they do that, they send those checks out to all the drivers, right? And you get a dollar ninety nine and a kick in the ass. <laughs> Is what it is, and they and they say, oh, oh, look at wonderful! You've won the case. You've that you've won this, won that. <clears throat> if they make it where we're hourly, yeah, you're, you're not going to be able to feed your families, folks, <laughs> with minimum wage. I can guarantee you that. <clears throat> look at your rent. <clears throat> look at your rent and your um, where you live or whatever you're paying. I mean, I don't know what your situation is. Each person's a little different, I guess. Some other people. Some of you just do this part time and it's not you're not going to care about it because you can just go to your other job or whatever. If you, if you quit, you quit, right? But a lot of us are full timers. So what do we do, right? All right, continue. So then the workers in Seattle that this is helping, what are you now going to have to do in return? I don't know. If you're in Seattle, drop a comment. You tell me what you think. I'm of the stance I want local government and most government to get out of the way with the gig economy. That's where I stand on that. If within your market you can't make minimum wage doing the gig app. I agree with that, that government should not be in involved in any of it. But these companies should not be able to also take control of, of what they want to do and screw people and steal and hide tips from from almost every order that we do. It's It's insane, folks. Like in any other country, in any other time, 20, 30 years ago, these people would all go to jail for fraud because what they're doing is fraudulent. This is all fraudulent practices to get people used to that way of thinking. So they're like, oh, you know, even, even me talking about this is almost futile because this will be old hat in the, in the, in the near future. They're, if these companies continue, this will be common practice to continue to screw the drivers and screw the customers and everything and keep stealing it'll be more incentive to for them to actually do it you might need to find something else so what are your thoughts about this put them in the comments down below how would you feel if it hits your market are you in a market that are you in california where you have prop 22 what do you think about it the, give me the good give me the bad give me your opinions in the comment section down below if it hits st louis I don't know if it would really make a big difference for me because I'm making more than the minimum wage in my city. So I'm not sure it would be an effective thing yeah, for me. Yeah, now, you know, that's another thing I want to say. You know, Pedro, God bless you. You're lucky, right? But again, 95% of the rest of America is not like you. Or, 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 let me let me just say it realistically. How about 70%? Because the other 30% are in highly... Um, populated like cities it probably all the cities are probably like yours i don't live in a city i live near cities but i'm 30 to 40 miles from cities so i'm in the suburbs right but i i can drive 30 minutes or 40 minutes to get into a city but i don't want to do it because i've done it before and it's it's way too much hassle and I don't know those markets and I know the market I'm in where I can at least survive. I can survive right now. <clears throat> None of us are prospering. If you're prospering, you're one in, you're probably one to 2% of the people actually prospering. And I would put Pedro in that category, but he has worked for it. I mean, we, I give him credit. I know you're doing other things, but that's not reality for the rest of us. All right, continue. And the more cities that do this, and they seem to be big cities, big states, right? With a lot of drivers. They're going to take something from, they have to, they're going to have to recoup the cost of that. And they're going to put it to the consumer, and then the trickle-down effect could actually mean less opportunities for the drivers in that particular market. And then they just become robots, and they're taking everything that they're supposed to take, and they're sitting at restaurants for a long time, and they're happy making the 17 bucks an hour. For me, I'd be losing money if I did that. And I think we have to remember, what well, what brought them to this legislation? Yeah, I don't know. I'm out in Seattle. But I think... What, what brought them to that? It brought... It, it It's through frustration, like people like me, people like Rideshare Professor that put out puts out all of this wonderful information to, you know, try to fight against stuff. We need more activists out there, activists to try to make change. But the only problem is the government is corrupt. 
So when the government is corrupt, folks, what are you going to do? <laughs> right? You have to kind of grin and bear it and just kind of go with the flow. I guess, <laughs> you know, we're all going to have to try to do something else at some point because we're not going to be, I mean, you know, I, I hate W-2 jobs because I've been doing this for like two years straight now. And I like the freedom, but I also don't like being a slave. I'm working way more hours now. I'm working 10 to 12 hours a day, folks. You know, I take breaks and rest in between. I might go out at 7.30 in the morning and work till 11. Then I take, or 10.30, then I take a break for an hour. Then I go back out for lunch. And then from two to four, I take another break. Then I go back out at four and drive till like nine or 10 or 8.30 at the late, you know, earliest uh, to try to modify everything. I mean, you have to, in this, this situation, you have to, even if I hate working overnights and late nights, but if I had to do it to survive, I guess I would do it. Right. There are a large amount of drivers that think not independently. And they, 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 they take a lot of bad offers, don't make money and wonder why. And then they want, they want to make more and they want the minimum wage. At the end of the day, we should not be taking the two, three, four dollar orders. We shouldn't be taking the bad fares on rideshare. We have to be selective. We have to be smart. And I think in a lot. And by the way, minimum wage would never pay your car expenses. Would never pay your uh, your uh, rent where you live. I mean, most apartments for one bedroom apartments are like fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars for just a one bedroom, and then. Anywhere from uh, two bedroom to three is between twenty five hundred and and thirty five hundred, <clears throat> all the way up to five and six thousand a month. You think you can afford that? Some of you may live at at home with mummy and daddy or something. Well, that that explains that for rent you don't have to pay rent, but what about expenses? Pay pay your car, pay whatever you know. Uh, some of you are. Uh, you know, born with a silver spoon in your mouth, maybe uh, like a young kid, 18, 19, just starting out. You're borrowing the dad's car to go, hey, it's life is good, right? You don't, he pays the gas. It's like a hundred bucks to fill up the tank, right? And he says, don't, don't worry, Johnny or Sally, go out and make some money. Even if it costs me a hundred bucks, I'll fill up the tank. See, he, they're trying to show you work skills, but in the real world, if you had to pay the gas, you wouldn't be doing this job. You wouldn't be doing it. <laughs> market you can make money if you're patient and selective and smart i think a lot of drivers will think they work for doordash work for uber they take everything that hits their phone and then wonder why they're not being profitable i think the legislation comes from that i'll be super curious to see what happens in seattle how this how this affects that market how it affects drivers money if more drivers like this if more drivers don't like it this wasn't a law that was passed upon and voted upon the drivers per se so if you're a driver what do you think put your comments down below and I appreciate you guys watching this video. Go ahead and watch. All right. So this next video. Hi um, I, so I want to end the video here just by saying, please look up the terms that I spoke about. And I'm so very sorry that I was coughing a lot and hacking in this video. But, oh, it's brutal. And I, I had to do this video. So hopefully my uh, my voice and my this pollen thing will get better in the next few days to a week. Oh, it's just terrible, folks. Um, anyone who suffers with allergies, you know what I'm talking about. But in closing, in closing on what we just talked about, I hope I opened some of your eyes or all of your eyes to uh, certain things. I mean, you can't know everything in this one video, folks. You're going to have to do some research and things. <clears throat> and it's going to lead to a lot of knowledge. And then you're going to, when you finally figure out what the real game is, folks, <clears throat> then you'll be ahead of the game. Because <clears throat> you <clears throat> you can be a few steps ahead <clears throat> to plan <clears throat> to plan on things for your future, you know. And uh, I wish that this was just a part-time thing for me right now but because of everything going on in the world um and things uh that i there's certain things i can't talk about here that's why i say come over to waking up the sheep so i'll leave the links in that description and what i was going to say is you know they're bringing back the um the l o c k d o w n s uh in the fall they're bringing them back Okay, I believe, 
from what I understand. And uh, <clears throat> a lot of things are going to be changing in the fall, folks. They're already pushing the narrative on the uh, mainstream media and everything. So there's that. <clears throat> and you might say, oh, that's great because when everything was was like that, I was making lots of money as a driver. Yeah, but you got to understand the food shortages and everything that's coming <clears throat> um, takes three to six months for it to pile up to to become something that um, is destructive for the economy. In other words, it doesn't just happen all in two seconds when you say, oh, shortages, you see it through time because a lot of these countries are not exporting food or exporting certain things that, that we normally get. So you're going to see a lot of things, all the shelves bare, probably in the, um, in the supermarkets and stuff, which will affect the restaurants and in turn, it'll affect the drivers. Cause if there's no food or hardly any or whatever, how the hell are you going to deliver anything? <laughs> Isn't that a nice pickle to be in? <clears throat> well, sorry to blow your mind folks. Cause I'm sure I just blew your mind about a lot of things, but I'm the channel that will talk about things that no one else will talk about, folks. Because I care about you guys. I care about all of you. I hope you're doing well. I hope you will continue to do well. Please write in the comments what you think about what I said. Please research these topics that we talked about. And please come over to uh, Waking Up the Sheep over on my other channel so you can learn a whole lot of other stuff that you will never learn here on YouTube. With that said, folks, thanks for watching. And I'll catch you guys and gals on the next one. Take care.